Thank you for the kind inter introduction. Absolutely thrilled and happy to be physically here in Tokyo. I know there's a lot of a lot of you that are online over there, but I'm just happy that it's been a while since I've been in one of my favorite cities, Tokyo, on a warm sunny day like like today. Uh, so. With the next 20 minutes, I will try to compress and tell you everything that will happen to mobility, to people in mobility, to cities, to businesses and everything. So bear with me, we'll try to get through all of that in, in good time. My name is Sampo Hietanen, known in the world as the guy who came up with, uh, with the concept of Mass Mobility as a Service. Also uh, the founder and CEO of Mass Global, the world's first Mass operator. And I'll try to tell you just about everything I know. Well, first, uh, from users and all of this, I'll try to tell what is Mass and why is it so important for us. Why will it change the world? What, what are the implications of that? First of all, of course, it's important because the media says so. I have been quite surprised that an engineer from Finland uh, has been able to, and, and from Finland, something can start that actually excites and is in Nikkei or Financial Times or Bloomberg and everywhere. And it is by asking this quite, uh, quite simple questions. First of all, it is quite obvious that the whole transportation is being hit by a digital tsunami. It would be relatively naive from us that are within the industry of mobility to say that no, no, media, banking, all of them have changed, but mobility will remain the same. My claim is since the Second World War, roughly about, the industry and the structures of the industry, they have been just about the same. And now it's time to actually see a bigger change. What we've seen so far is actually just the beginning, just a bit of a glimpse of what is happening. Daring to ask tough questions is the key always. And I will uh, try to convince you that asking this one question, daring to ask this one question, is actually the key to just about everything. And you have to be humble with the one. So if I will now tell you all, you can close your eyes, try not to sleep, let's see if you do. Close your eyes. How many of you actually have a car? Quite many. Being in Tokyo, I don't see the real reason. Okay, uh, now what would I have to from here promise to you so that you would give up your car? And this is not an ideological question, this is a business question. I really have to be as good as the car. Car is the Ronaldo or Messi of this game. And in order for that, you really have to appreciate the, the leader of the game. What would it take? So it's a bit of a history. I was talking about this change and mass for many years and everybody was saying, yeah, hmm, hmm, maybe. Then one night after a couple of whiskey, I said, okay, I will do a user case actually think of what would it mean to user, not the industry, not the cities, not anyone like that, but the actual person. I try to come up with different types of solutions. My thinking is we're all aiming towards this 15 minute package you see up there, where I will tell you, let's see if you're willing to give up your car with this one. I will tell you, you do not have to worry about anything. Within 15 minutes or in Tokyo, within five minutes, you're always moving. Whether I use a taxi, train, uh, bike, scooter, a car, whatever, you don't have to worry about it. Everything, I will book it. Everything opens to you. I'll make sure that everything works. Would you give up your car for that kind of service? Anyone? I will get you soon, let's see. Uh, but it, it's not easy. The problem of trying to be as good as a car, really fulfilling the dreams of the people, demands a lot. There is no player out there, no public transport, no uh, ride share, no car share, none of them that can actually be the same as the car does. It is anywhere, anytime on a whim. You have to be able to guarantee people all their rights, not just, it's not about getting from one A to one B, it has to be all your A's, all the destinations that you can think of. But the good part of this is, if you put everything together, you start to be there. 
So if we as an industry think of it that the competition is not uh, a train against train, train against bike, it is about putting all of this together to actually give a complete service to the end user. It takes a lot. You really have to combine all of them to be able to give people what they really do deserve. Now, there is an evolution, and this will not happen overnight. Most of the places are actually in the first step of, of climbing the mountain, uh, but there are interesting steps ahead. It is about being a service for people in their actual lives, and we will climb up the ladders. Uh, in some cases, we are at roaming mobility, but no, mostly not. Uh, it will end where the wasted time of now, people waste about 90 minutes of their day, they're willing to waste for transportation. Uh, it, will, it will go to a point where that 90 minute will start coming back to being my time. But there's a bit of, bit of time before that happens. All right, we've been doing this for quite a long time. Uh, it is actually doable. It's not easy, I can tell you. We've used about 20 million lines of code to actually get it done. But it is something that's, that's, uh, that's doable. I'll tell you a bit more about that. So let's start with where it should always start and end and be everywhere in everyone's mind who is in the industry, whether you're a city, where you're government, you should just think about that one user again. So for people. Car is not a car. It is all about my personal freedom. That means the guarantee, the thought of anywhere, anytime on a whim. That's a big dream. A long time ago, it must have been a revelation. Oh my God, I can actually go just like that. On a Sunday, I can go golfing. If I want to go to Mount Fuji, I can go. I don't have to worry about things. We have to be at least as good as that car has been. Car is an insurance, it's a freedom insurance. When everything else fails, the car will be there. So this is what we have to have in our mind. At the moment, what the industry is producing, if I'm in London, I, I think also not that bad in Tokyo, but many other places, you will have to have for your daily mobility, 30, even 40 apps to go around these 10 minutes trips. Is this the future? Would you want to have with your mobile phone, would you want to every time think that, okay, uh, now I'm calling mom, is it Entity, Docomo, or is it someone else that I should choose? Come on, you want one to serve them, and this is what we need to be doing. A bit like Spotify, Netflix, many of them, that, that you can actually have everything from there. But what we tend to do uh, as an industry is forgetting that it's a lot of design. It's not a rational thing. You need a lot of design to actually make all of these convenient for the end user. I know we've done at least a 30 generation and we're still not happy with the design. Let's remember, this is where the car industry is good. Cars are so well designed. There are thousands and thousands of really brilliant designers that are doing it. Now, this is the time where I tend to get, yeah, Sampo, yeah, 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 that, that could be somewhere there, but we Japanese, we Australians, we Finnish, we, we love our cars, so this is probably not going to happen. Trust me when I say it's not true. Often in the audience or decision makers are men like, men like me, uh, middle-aged men who think that everybody is like us. They're not. Uh, if you look at people, what they expect from the industry, what they actually want, 81% will say that by 2030, I will be prefer to use one single platform. I want these things. Now the question is, why do people want, people are more advanced, they want something than what we as industry, cities, governments are offering to them. It's kind of silly, but it is obvious that in the end, the consumer wins. They will get what they want, and it's pretty obvious what they do want. Now, why would cities and governments care about this? Why would, why would you be interested? Let's think of it from, uh, from tax paying business or, or sustainability issues. Uh, let's remember this change, I told that it's a digital tsunami that is hitting transportation. It is 10 times bigger than the change that happened in telecom when we went from landlines to actual mobile phones. People spent 20% of their household budget is in transportation. 76% of that money is with owning and using a car. 76% of all the money there. That car sits unused 96% of the time. 
That's the global average. I know in Tokyo it's actually much more. We'll get to that a bit later. Uh, to carbon emissions, um, I come from Europe where, uh, where carbon emissions, 40% of that will be actually from transport. It is now 25. With all the electrification that everything that happens, it's still going upwards. 60% of that is from the private cars. So we do know that it's, a, it's an issue that we have to solve one way or another. I would hope that we solve it with, by, by good means, by pe giving people good services and not banning them from using cars or doing anything. That's not the way to do it. We need to give them something ra rather. Now, success, is it doable? Yes, it is. Uh, in Helsinki, in Finland, where we've done this longest, where there's a lot of public, it's really a good public transport city, are the users that we have have used about 50% uh, about more public transport. They also use taxis much more. But as a, as a transport engineer, I'm even more convinced of this. Over 40% of trips with bikes are plugged together with, uh, are coupled with public transportation. They use three times more taxi uh, in, in conjunction together with public transportation. So it is actually doable. Now, I get often asked from the cities and governments, uh, what should we do about this? Where, where should we go? And I, I take this uh, soccer uh, example because it, it works and I, I, I just happen to love it. Um, if you want to be the referee, which the cities and governments are, they are by nature the ones, then please do not be a player at the same time. If you're the referee, do not try to be messy at the same time. It does not work. Uh, there's a lot of these ongoing uh, in Europe, in Japan, in US, where a government wants to be the referee, but at the same time they want to pick a pilot here and there. And it's a market evolution, and you will not get with isolated island projects and pilots just about anywhere. Trust me, it's been done quite a long time in Europe. It is a market evolution, not a pilot or POC evolution that needs to happen. This is the hardest part for the industry uh, and why we need referees. This is an industry with a lot of egos. And if we want to do it, the only way we can get it done is in an ecosystem, not an ego system. It needs access to all these transportation from different competitive fields for that. Eventually, there's a big change that is coming. The change with the car, the big car that happened, changed also the logic of the cities. Now, if we go back to the first questions, what would it take? And if people start consuming without car ownership, it will change also the, the look and feel of the cities. Tokyo is probably one of the best ones in the world for this, uh, especially already being, being coordinated by hubs that are walkable, not yet pluggable, meaning that it's relatively hard to bring new innovation, whether it's micromobility bikes or any um, uh, ride sharing, car sharing, that plugs into your actual uh, station like that. But that will be a quite a big change. Now, for the environment, go back to this, 38% of people are actually saying that they're looking for a solution for their car ownership. Uh, with the mass, we can actually go more than 50% down on, on greenhouse emissions. So yes, it ha does have a huge impact, but it goes back to the original question. We have to do something that is better than owning a car. We cannot do halfway. Uh, there's, there, there are actual examples. We've been doing this. So let's imagine your uh, dear employee, uh, employer, the company, will give you, instead of a car, or you yourself have that instead of a car, you have a budget of CO2 emission. If you want to use two kilometers of Hummer and you drive with a fancy car, you can do it. But everything that you do, the more sustainable you do, uh, it goes into your CO2 budget. If you save, we will reward you with something better. It is really doable once you go into this operator mode of mass as such. If we are successful with our mission, for example, that we can replace one million cars, that would mean 11 million tons of CO2 saved. These are huge figures, but we have to do it without people jeopardizing their freedom. So why would the businesses do it? 
First of all, because it's a natural evolution. It will happen whether anyone in the industry wants it or not, it will just happen. From ownership, we're already moving towards uh, this private lease, having services and all, all things plugged together into it. It's just a natural evolution that it's not just car as a service, it will be the whole mobility as a service. If you don't trust me, trust some of the, the ones that actually know better. It will not be in the beginning like this, it will not happen over now, don't worry. Not everything will change immediately. But you know from other industries that one, once we start hitting that 10%, 5%, the rest will go up like that. And those that invest now are normally the ones that are then leading the pact when, when that hockey stick really hits the, hits the ground. This is the hardest part of everything. This shows how to make money out of multimodality. Now, if I get you to pay the same money as you pay for your car, which in Europe is a bit more than 600 euros, um, what, what is it, that's about 60,000 yens a month, uh, a bit more, then I get that from you. Now how do I make money? Is I make money by lowering the production, which means that every time I convert you to biking, walking, using public transportation, my production cost goes lower, my profits go upwards. So doing sustainable choices can actually be a profit driver in mass, which is the most important part of it. The good part is also that the physical investments exist. Whether it's Tokyo, uh, Jakarta, many of these places, the physical elements of mass are actually there. All you have to do is digitally plug them together provided that of course the industry is willing to do it with a bit of help. Now you say that is it, is it really, does it have an impact? This is again from Helsinki, where already now with not really perfect solutions, 24% of the actual users either avoided buying a car or sold their cars because of the help that, that we've been doing over there. So yes, it does have that impact. I'll take another fast example from Italy. Uh, why, would a, why would an insurance company give you, when your car breaks down, another car, where they could give you a voucher of mobility just instead, and actually make more profits and, and earnings out of that by giving you more choices? This is also one of the implications, and definitely a way of the future. Now. We go to my favorite part, mass for Japan, and why I am happy here. I am seriously convinced that Japan would, could, and should be the leader of the world for, for mass. Why? Uh, the, it is dense, it is highly equipped. The services, the infrastructure are absolutely marvelous. You have all the Shinkansen, the public transport works, there's good enough taxis, there's car shares, there's car rentals, everything is there. They're digitally amazing. The Suica solution is, is amazing. It's just a bit of slowness that tends to happen. And two small pilots, instead of thinking Japan as a pilot for the rest of the world to show how this actual digital change should happen, also, in order to transfer the whole industry to be ready for this global change. So, in, in many ways, I, I am here to urge Japan to take the lead, be the first ones in this, but do not think too small. That's the, that's the way. We've been trialing it out. We're also looking for partners. So anyone in there that wants to do it with us, please come to me afterwards and we'll get it going within days and then the mass will happen tomorrow and everything is ready. No, it is actually something that we've trialed. It seems to be definitely what the consumers want. And that's where I would want to also end this. It does not matter what's in it for your city. It does not matter what's in it for your core business. The only thing that matters first in this kind of thing is what the users want. What do they get out of this? You do not think of a, a parcel solution, think of their whole lives. And if you can do that, the rest will start following. With that, I thank you. I don't know if we have still time for a couple of questions or somebody saying, you're wrong, because that would be also cool. Uh, please, share some questions. Thank you.